Well, I mean, um, you know, it, it's you want to you want to get the director's vision realized. Sometimes they don't have a vision. I've learned, and so in that case, it's you have to make a movie that works, and works on different levels. You know, an artistic one that uh, you're happy with, and hopefully the people that made the movie are happy. But then on a commercial level, the studio's money is at stake, and. Um, they would prefer the movie make money rather than be artistically satisfying. I think, in, in most cases. So there's all those th there's all those things to consider. But I just try and put myself in the place of a viewer, of an audience member, who hasn't seen any any of it because they don't. I'm the one that sees everything, and you can get lost in all that, and not and forget that you know it's people paying for a ticket, going in and sitting in a dark room and you know, um, having an experience outside of themselves. That's the important thing. So I, I'm always trying to act like, you know, maybe a five-year-old when I, I don't understand things that other people might understand when they're seeing a scene that they shot. You know, director brings a whole experience to it or a writer might think it meant this and that, but I walk in like I don't know what it's about. So I think over the years that's kind of helped me be clear in my storytelling. And um, I, I, I really have to kind of thank Don Simpson for that. Um, he, was, he was very innocent in his view of movies. And he came from that view of an audience member that didn't, didn't know anything when he walked in a room. He would always say, why are we doing this? What's this? What's that? Get rid of And And I'm, I'm that way too. I mean, I've learned to be that way. So I think it's, I think it's helped me over the years. Um, Make make clear sense of all the film that I get, uh, and tell the right story. It can be a curse because you have to find the story in the material, and if it's not there, it's it's much harder. Um, it it can be great if you're wanting to create pace, because in pace um, you need a lot of angles, mm -hmm. and in my experience with Tony Scott. He's a, we did Top Gun, from Top Gun to last year, the taking of Pelham um, and Crimson Tide and a bunch, I think we've done nine movies together. He puts cameras up everywhere and it's, not, it's, it's much better for his style of picture because he doesn't want you to draw breath. He doesn't want the audience to even take a moment to understand. He just keeps driving home the pace. So that's, that's why he shoots that way. Other movies would never do that. I mean, a romantic comedy, I can't imagine that you would, you, you would cover angles. It's not about the angles. It's really about the performance and, the, and how funny something hits you. But in these action movies, you want to create a sense of tension, and you need the angles to do it. I had finished a movie um, with the same producer that he had. Um, no, I finished a movie with a director that the producer of Batman Returns was the producer of this director's previous movie called Heathers. Michael Lehman was his name. And she recommended that he talk to me because she talked to the director. That's, it's all, you know, referrals and um, who people trust. So I, I went in to talk to him. It was pretty simple. And, um, you know, I'd always admired his films. Up until then, he had only, he had made, uh, I think, maybe three movies, Batman, um, Beetlejuice, and Edward Scissorhands. And um, uh, so I went in to talk to him, and you know, he, he hired me, he liked me, he hired me. He's a very um, instinctive guy, so maybe he thought we would get on in the editing room pretty well. He's also the kind of director that doesn't micromanage. He doesn't sit behind me at the machine and say, try this, try that, try this, do this, do this. He keeps a very broad view of, of the world and of the movie, which and he sees it like an audience member, whereas a lot of directors get very lost in the detail. And um, they're, they're overworking the, the minutiae of the movie, which sometimes can put the big picture at risk. What I've found is my first instincts are usually the best. I think in life that's true. And if you second guess yourself, um, it's not, it's like you say, the enemy of good is better. It, it can, it, it, 
it, it's not always the best thing. So I just start with what I think is the best way to go and just the best performance and knowing I'll even just grab one and get a pattern for the editing of a scene that I think is good and then go back and work on maybe the performances and then be wandering through the material again and find something that I like and have to wedge that in. You know, it, 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 every scene is different. Every movie is different. So there's not really a set way of approaching it.